Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are diving deeper into exactly how vectors of vectors in C++ work. So this is the code that we were left off with in the last video. Uh, we only had 10 minutes, so I ripped through pretty fast and just basically wrote the code and didn't provide too much insight into, be, into exactly what's being created, when and where. Uh, just basically show that the code works and this is possible. So in this video, we'll trace, I guess we'll just trace by hand exactly what's getting created, when it's getting created, and we'll be able to see exactly how this program flows from the beginning to the end. So let's start by listing all of the things that we have in our program. Well, on the very first line of our main function, we define a vector of vectors called stuff. So we can write that here. Uh, the first thing that we'll see is stuff. We don't say that stuff has, we don't initialize any values to stuff, and we don't uh, we don't create any uh, any size to it. So we actually create stuff as a vector of size zero. So I like to think of it sort of just as a dot, uh, where, for example, if we were to create, you know, um, a vector with three elements, it would look something, you know, we could visualize it something more like this, where we have three elements and, you know, values in those spaces. But for now, until we use pushback, we actually have a size of zero. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, when we enter this for loop, the we create an integer called i, so we'll have i, and we set that to zero. We initialize it to zero. I'm oh, sorry, right here, we initialize it to zero. Then the next statement in here inside this first for loop is we define another vector, this one of type integer, and this guy's called temp. So we create temp, our vector, and again, this guy has no size, it's just sort of a point, you know, it's a dot that the computer is aware of that it exists now and it's ready to accept integers. Okay, so then we enter the nested for loop and we define another integer called j and we initialize that to zero. All right, now we're ready to iterate this inner loop five times. So what we do in the first statement of the first iteration, we actually push back i into temp. So at that point, when we push back temp, uh, it ceases to be a size zero, and we actually create the first element in temp, and where it's the the value of that element is whatever i is set to, so it's a zero. All right, then what we do at the end of this single statement, then we go back into our loop. So we iterate j, so j is no longer zero. J becomes a one. I guess I can write that in blue. J becomes a one. I is still zero because i is in this outer loop. And then what we do is we push back i into temp. So again, we create, now by using pushback, we create a second element and we push back whatever the value for i is. And the value for i is zero. Note, we're not pushing back j. All right, so that finishes that iteration. Uh, and then we will go and we increment j again. And then we do this again. We push back i into temp. So we again, we create another element in temp and we drop in the value for i. Then what we do, increment j. That becomes a three and do exactly the same thing. We push back i into temp and i is still zero. All right, I think you see where this is going. Uh, then we increment j, j becomes a four. And then again, we do exactly the same thing. We push back i into temp. So we push back, we create this other zero here. And then what we do is we finally increment this uh, j here to be five. And then when j is not less than 5 anymore, it won't run these, uh, these statements. So then it kicks us out of this nested loop. And then what the next thing our program sees is we want to push back temp into stuff. So when we push back something into stuff, it ceases to have zero size. And we actually push back in. We create the first element. And that element uh, is temp. Now, what we already know, though, is temp actually is its own vector of five integers. So what we can do, that's exactly the same thing as saying the first element, uh, the first element in stuff basically is this vector called temp, which has five integers. All right, so that takes us to the end of this first loop. And then what we do is we increment i and we do it all over again. So we come here. We increment i to now be 1. And then when we, <clears throat> when we enter in this loop again, this statement here is basically saying, hey, temp is this vector that holds integers and it has size 0. So it actually erases everything that we thought we had in here, or not thought, it erases everything that we did have in here, and it sets it back to uh, a vector of size 0.
Then when we enter this, uh, this loop here, it resets j to be 0 again. So now j will no longer be 5. j gets set back to 0, just like that. And then when we enter so the statements in this nested loop, then what we do is we push back i into temp. So at that point, again, for the second time now, temp ceases to have 0 size. And then we push back whatever the value for i is. And look, i's value now is 1. All right, and then we again, we push back i. We're going to push back i five times in total. And each time, or we're going to push back i into temp five times. And each time, the value of i won't change because we're incrementing j as we go. So this will get 1, become 1, and then 2, and then become 3, 4, and eventually 5. And that's where it'll kick us out of the loop. So there we go. We do exactly what we did here uh, five times, and we keep passing in. We keep passing in i into temp with pushback. Then once j is uh, is j has a value of five, it kicks us out of this loop. And then again for the second time now, we push back whatever temp is into stuff. So now what we do, looking up here at stuff, we're going to create another element. So we create the second element in stuff, and we're going to pass in whatever temp currently is. And at this point, temp is actually, again, it's this vector of integers. It has five elements. And right now, all those elements are ones. So we pass it in. And so the other way we can look at this, instead of saying stuff is a vector with two elements, which it is, uh, we, can, we know that those elements uh, have these corresponding values already inside of them for their integers. All right, so that takes us to the end of this loop. And then we come back here again, we enter this outer for loop for the, the third time. And so then i becomes 2. And then again, when we come in here, we say, yeah, temp no longer. Now we're defining, basically, we're redefining temp to have size 0. So that wipes out all of the values that would be inside of it. So just like that. Uh, temp now is just the size 0, and when we enter this, we say, hey, j is 0 again, so we go back to the drawing board. j is no longer 5 after we sort of redefine it to be 0. And then we do exactly the same thing. So then we push back whatever i is into temp. So then immediately temp, again, for the third time now, ceases to have 0 elements, and then we push back in whatever i is, and now we're putting a 2 in there. And then we increment through this loop. So this will go to 1, it'll go to 2, 3, 4, and eventually 5. And each time we increment this loop, we push back i into temp. And so then there we go. We Again, we create another element, and the value is 2. We create another element, and the value is always going to be 2 in this iteration. And so that will actually end up creating 5 elements with a value of 2, which was of the value of i. And then after j is 5, so once we've created these 5, I just kind of skipped ahead a little bit, um, then it kicks us out of this loop. And then again, for the third time, we push back whatever is in temp into stuff. And that creates our third element in stuff. So we put in whatever is in temp. And we know right now that currently temp has 5 integers in it. It's a vector of 5 integers, and all of the values are twos. So there we go. You can see that this is actually our program output. We have uh, three we have three rows and those rows are all zeros, then all ones and then all twos and there's actually five values as you go across. Um, so we've actually this is showing basically what we've stored in the computer, but this isn't showing how we're printing it out to the screen. but it's actually very simple compared to what we've done here, which is can be a little tricky to, uh, to trace if you don't do it by hand. Uh, the displaying it to the user is actually quite a bit easier. So we just have a nested for loop here. And then it basically this first this first line uh, controls how many time how many rows will output. So I've set it to whatever the size to, to run what the number of times for whatever corresponds to the size of stuff. And stuff has a size of three. So it's actually going to run three times and give us these three rows. And then here, as we print the values in each of those rows, it actually goes into stuff. It takes the index value of stuff uh, that is 0. So it basically tracks. It'll increment, but for, they're all the same size. So it uh, <laughs> use the member function 
to figure out the size of the vector at each of these index values. And each time the size of the vector in each of these elements will be five. So it'll actually print five times five zeros and then it'll kick us out. And then here, obviously, it just prints the corresponding zeros or ones or twos. And then outside of that loop, it'll just so it'll print five, it'll drop us down with this end line, and then it'll print five again, it'll drop us down with this end line, and it'll print five again. And at that point, it will have ran three times, which was the size of stuff. And then it kicks us out, displays these nice numbers. And that's exactly how the program works. So uh, hopefully that makes sense uh, because in the last video we just wrote the code We didn't actually trace through and see how and why exactly this program output is happening, but there you go I hope that helps